starts to destroy us. We can actually, there's new blood tests that are just coming out of the market now where we can actually measure antibodies floating through our system that are developing. So people that are developing Alzheimer's show that antibodies to their brain floating in there 10, 20 years before they actually develop Alzheimer's. People that are developing thyroid disease show antibodies to their thyroid or worse health to their thyroid years in advance before they get the thyroid completely shuts down or the pancreas or rheumatoid arthritis or Crohn's disease. There's a lot of different diseases that are essentially the same thing. Fibromyalgia is almost along that same lines where our body's kind of attacking itself. So another one that is really common uh, or becoming more common is genetically modified food. And we're seeing new diseases that are popping up that we've never even heard of because 10 years ago we never had genetically modified food floating through, our, through, through the society. Now as we're starting to see more genetically modified food, we're starting to see new diseases develop. Um, and if you want to just read some more about genetically modified food, I don't want to go into this too much, but there's some interesting stuff as far as how, how they genetically modify the food, how they, how they create a, a new uh, cell or thing. High fructose corn syrup is one of these genetically modified food. So they're basically changing the structure of corn to make it so that you can spray it full of pesticides. The corn's going to live, the other weeds are going to die, and get better yields and things like that. And then they use this corn as supposedly cheaper to make to make high fructose corn syrup, which is basically sugar that's pumped into everything. So if you read the back of the label, it says high fructose corn syrup on there. That's going to be genetically modified food, and that creates a lot of issues with food allergies. Really a big one is this is high fructose corn syrup and genetic modified food for food allergies. This just talks about right here, second ingredient pop, high fructose corn syrup. Those are solutions, yes there is. You have to identify what the cause of the leaky gut is, what's damaging our digestive system, and then remove that food allergy from the body. Then the body will start to heal the digestive tract. Those gap junctions will start to come back, and then we can potentially start to eat that food again if we can heal the digestive system. So to remove the toxins out of there, detoxify, add in some things like probiotics that are going to help, or omega-3 digestive enzymes is going to help repair the digestive system by bringing the inflammation down, helping the digestive food to break it down, and then the body could potentially heal and potentially start eating some of these things again. So, uh, one, one idea or one thing that we also notice is we need to drink more water. If we don't have enough water, our muscles become tight, and so the toxins accumulate, so it's very important to drink water. The amount of water should be, if you take your body weight, divided by two, that's how many ounces of water we should drink in a day. So eight ounces of water, eight, eight ounce glasses of water is really only appropriate for some people. We just take our weight, divided by two, that's how much water we should, we should be having. A lot of people in the United States are dehydrated right now. It creates more or pain. But things like dairy, coffee, alcohol, those things don't count as water. Um, that these are more potentially dehydrated things, especially coffee and, and alcohol, they actually pull water out of our bodies. So if we're going to have like a can of pop, we have to have two cans of water just to get back to even. Organic fruits and vegetables, these are loaded full of vitamins and enzymes. Again, organic is more important because it doesn't have the pesticides on it, especially if they're women, those pesticides are estrogen reactive in the body that cause more problems for women. So more important to eat organic if you're a woman than a man because of the estrogen effects of the pesticides. Still important for both people, but more so for women. Detoxifying foods, again, the same foods that we just talked about. Also things like green tea, psyllium, cilantro, fruits, green leafy vegetables. These things are all detoxifying because they're loaded full of antioxidants and antioxidants bind to the free radicals and help to decrease those damaging substances in the body. So again, and since we just talked about this, free radicals cause damage to the cells, oxidative stress, if the antioxidants offset that. So we can also do detoxification. This is a really hot thing these days. We, we see it in a lot of nutrition stores. We see read about it on the internet. Everybody's talking about detox. What's the best way to do detox? Um, Metagenics makes a pretty good product, but you can find a lot of different products at different stores. I would talk to somebody that's already done a detox that, that, that's worked well for them because there's some side effects 
do a detox if you don't do it correctly. Um, the problem is if we pull, if we don't get our body healthy before we try to do a detox, all we do is we pull the, the toxins out of our body and then they just get reabsorbed back in. And so as we're moving the toxins around in our bodies, it's going to create a bunch of side effects and we're going to feel terrible when we do it. So the first thing we got to do is get our digestive system working better so that we have a route to eliminate the toxins and then we can start to pull those out of the body if you're doing one of the detoxification programs. Uh, this product by Metagenics, Ultra Clear Plus, I brought one in, just to see what it looks like. Uh, this one, Ultra Clear Renew, it basically is designed to help improve the body's uh, detoxification mechanism. So it's not, it's not like a chelation. They also have things called chelation therapy, which will pull minerals out of your body. You should do some type of a test before you do chelation to find out what levels are high and so you know how to chelate those things out of there. There's minerals that you can put into your body that will grab onto the, onto the toxins and pull them out. But if we're going to try to pull, let's say, zinc out of our body or copper out of our body, if, we don't, if we're not necessarily low on it, we start to take some of those chelation therapy ones, they'll still pull the, the zinc and the copper out even though we might need that. So it's important to do some type of a test before you do uh, chelation therapy. This one is going to just improve our own body's uh, normal detoxification mechanism, so it's not dangerous if we're not tested. So the different ways to do the test, there's blood tests, there's urine tests, there's hair samples and stool samples, or you can do a questionnaire that, there's, there's a couple different routes to find out uh, are you toxic and what you benefit from doing a detox program. Some new research that's coming out regarding fibromyalgia, cytokines and genetics. Cytokines um, are basically, let's skip to, to, to this, cytokines. There's glial cells, which you're finding in the brain. They always thought that they were just part of the body. They weren't really necessary. They weren't really doing anything. These glial cells make up about 50% of the brain cells. They surround all the brain's, around all the brain's neurons. And what happens is when we're under inflammation, these glial cells start kicking off cytokines called interleukin-6 or tumor necrosis factor alpha. And what they're finding in people that have fibromyalgia, when they do like a biopsy of their skin, even though these things aren't supposed to be in there, these markers, they're finding that skin cells and muscle cells are loaded full of these cytokines, which are pain-producing molecules that come from the glial cells in the brain. So when we're under chronic inflammation, I think it's a protective mechanism for the brain, but it's pumping off all these chemicals, these inflammatory cytokines throughout the body. And like I said, they're not supposed to be in there, but when we measure, when we do biopsies in people with fibromyalgia, we're finding that they're loaded full, muscle cells and skin cells are loaded full of these cytokines. So, I want to go back to this slide, probiotics and enzymes. Um, probiotics are the good bacteria that's supposed to be in the digestive tract. So when we learn, learn about how do we do a detoxification program and how do we improve the health of the gut, we want to make sure that we have the right bacteria in there. If we have the wrong bacteria in our digestive tract, we're going to be making gas and pain and um, all kinds of problems when we're digesting food. But the good bacteria is designed to help break down the food and make vitamins in there. So probiotics is one of the things we can add in to help heal up the digestive system. Enzymes. This is really popular in Europe. They're called proteolytic enzymes. Um, a lot of people in Europe are taking them to help break down the pain-producing substances. So bromelain is one that, I wrote it down right here, bromelain is one that's really popular. It comes from pineapple, and it helps to break down a lot of those pain-producing substances. It also helps to break down protein and, and undigested food. So digestive enzymes and enzymes are, are, are able to help to reduce inflammation in our body, eat up some of those chemicals and some of those toxins that are causing the pain. Here's some other things. The glial cell triggers are essentially the same as, as the triggers for fibromyalgia and for inflammation. So same thing. Whiplash, injury, infection, viruses, toxic exposure, they're all triggering those glial cells to produce those cytokines. We're also seeing these things with, uh, with brain injuries and, and Alzheimer's and things. Uh, where, where brains malfunction.